Do radioisotope ages always agree? As it turns out, absolute ages of billions of years conflicts greatly with a young age creationist worldview. After all, all young age creationists believe that the Earth is less than about 10,000 years old. So just how accurate is the absolute dating method? Well, according to this paper published just last year in 2023 and also presented at the 2023 International Conference on Creationism, there may be reason for caution. These researchers, they mined the National Geochronological Database looking for how often these radioisotope ages agreed with themselves. Now, if they agreed, we say that the dates are concordant. If they disagreed, we say the dates are discordant. So, for example, here is one of the records from the National Geochronological Database. Now, these colored shapes, they represent radioisotope systems made up of isotope pairs that are used to date rocks. This one is uranium-235 to lead 207. Uranium is said to be the parent isotope and lead is said to be the daughter isotope. That is because the uranium decays away until it turns into lead. This is another system that uses potassium and argon. Now here is yet another that uses lead to lead but is actually based on the decay of uranium-238 and 235. Now, this is the 238 to lead 206 system. Finally, this one is rubidium to strontium. Now, the first isotope is always the parent product. The last one is always the daughter product. Now, when the same colored shape is duplicated, it means that the same system was used twice. So, for example, uh, there were two dates that used this system and only one that used this one. Now, these horizontal lines, they're error bars. And these bars, they represent the uncertainty of the age. Now, in this example, the lower bar starts at about 320 million years, and the top bar is at about 360 million years. And that means that the assumed age is about 340 million years, but also has an uncertainty of 20 million years on either side of that figure. The most important axis here is the y-axis, it shows the recorded age for each isotope pair or system in hundreds of millions of years. Now, this record is what we would call mostly concordant. So although there are some variances in the different ages, at least the overall recorded ages fall within all of the error bars. Okay, so now let's take a look at a discordant example. Notice here that the different system pairs are highly discordant. So at the top, we can see that the lead to lead system is concordant with the rubidium strontium system, mutually recording ages at about 2 billion 600 million years. Now, but notice that the error bars for these two systems do not overlap with any of the other three systems. Next is the uranium-235 lead-207 system that is isolated, having a recorded age of about 2 billion 400 million years. And then we have these two systems, uranium-238 to lead-206 and thorium-232 to lead-208. The uranium to lead pair record an age of about 2 billion 100 million years, and the thorium to lead pair record an age at about 2 billion years. Notice once again that these error bars, they do not cross any of the other isotope systems. Now as you increase the number of different systems, the amount of discordance actually increases. Interestingly, notice how concordant the same system is relative to itself. So here for example, the same system was used to obtain three separate ages, but notice how concordant they all are to each other compared to how discordant the different radioisotope systems are to each other. And although it is difficult to see, there are two different ages using the same system here. Uh, these two recorded ages are so concordant that they are nearly 
on top of each other, yet things get even more interesting. Back in 2005, a group of creation scientists known as the Rate Group, they sent hundreds of rock samples to conventional labs for dating. They wanted to know if indeed radioisotope ages were concordant or discordant. Now this graph is my simplified version of their research. The rock unit is given on the left with its age as found in the scientific literature given in the next column. The dating method is shown next, then the number of samples. The last four columns show the ages as determined by the conventional labs for the samples that the creationist scientists had sent to them. Now, the creationist scientists organized things so that the same rock unit was dated using four different methods. They are potassium argon, rubidium strontium, samarium neodymium, and lead to lead. Now, this latter method, however, depends on the uranium-238, 235 to lead, 206, 207 systems. I did not include the error bars, and the ages in red have enough error that the numbers may not be statistically significant. Now, as it turns out, the dates were mostly discordant. Notice that the age in the second column that comes from the literature often disagreed with the most recent ages obtained by the rate research. Now, that alone is really, really interesting. Now, as we have seen, it was also demonstrated by this latest research in 2023. But here's what's really interesting. The four different isotope systems in the last four columns are all in order with the lowest atomic mass first and the highest atomic mass last. So potassium has an atomic mass of 40, rubidium 87, samarium 147, and the lead to lead system, which is dependent on both uranium 238 and 235, would give us an average mass of about 236.5. Now have a look at the rock units starting with the Brahm amphibolites and look at the dates going from the left to the right. The rate group discovered that much of the time, but not all of the time, the lightest atomic mass system dated younger than the heavier systems. Now, this also occurs with the Elves Chasm Granite Diorite. Other rock units only generally had this trend. So, for example, the Gardenes Basalt and the Somerset Dam Layered Mafic Intrusion. Certainly interesting, don't you think? Well, in this latest paper from 2023, and with the rate group's research in mind, similar results were also obtained. And this is how they summed up their observations on this general pattern of older ages for heavier isotope systems. We also found a systematic pattern in radioisotope discordances, somewhat similar to the pattern identified previously by the rate radioisotopes and the age of the Earth group. Rate also reported that within alpha or beta decaying methods, the heavier isotope tended to yield older ages. In our study, we found the same pattern. So what does all of this mean? Well, I think the first thing we must realize is that this new research is still preliminary. For example, no attempt was made to distinguish model ages from mineral isochron ages from Concordia ages. Uh, there was also the application of a simple concordance discordance metric. Either the age was or wasn't discordant. Future research will undoubtedly need to improve these and other methodological and data shortcomings. So please don't think that the young age creationist absolute dating problem is solved. It isn't. Now, having said that, however, I do think that the rate group and now these other young age creationist researchers, I think they're onto something. Not only do these data support the notion that radio isotope discordance is real, it is alarmingly so. Now, more importantly, however, is the observation that heavier isotopes may actually date older than lighter isotopes. Now, back in 2005, the rate group hypothesized that accelerated radioisotope decay may account for this phenomenon. Now, in other words, yes, millions of years 
worth of decay occurred, but not at modern rates. All in all, I will be looking forward to future research. Okay, so that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Look, if you enjoyed this video, if you got anything out of it at all, then please pound that like button and share this video on your social media platform. If you wanted to give, I'd really appreciate that. You'll see a link for PayPal in the description. And as always, I appreciate prayer. Thank you. We'll see you next time.